<clears throat> okay guys, uh, do another video here on, uh, try to keep it real simple on the common man theme, uh, probably call this, uh, thrift store bushcraft or, um, you know, just picking through some, some cheap common man stuff. Uh, but I brought you guys inside the house today to keep it quiet from outside and get you guys a little better look, hopefully. Just want to go over a couple things that I found. Uh, me and my wife frequent, uh, you know, yard sales and, uh, you know, antique stores a lot. Um, sometimes some of the thrift stores. Um, it's kind of hard to find good stuff, but if you search around, you can find some good stuff and some good deals. So, I just want to show you guys a couple of the things that I found. So, first off, went to a little thrift store and found this uh, slingshot here. It's a Daisy power line. Probably not the greatest thing in the world, but, you know, for four bucks, you know, you got yourself a pretty good, cheap hunting tool with, you know, you can secure meat with, uh, you know. With the calorie game being what it is and you know snares traps fishing might not always work so if you see that rabbit or you see that squirrel or something like that you know maybe you can secure some meat with a slingshot um, like I said it was four bucks thrift store ammo's everywhere you just pick up rocks <clears throat> heck you could probably even pick up acorns and or, or nuts or whatever and and be able to at least stun an animal to be able to get over there and dispatch it as soon as you can. So, yeah, like I said, four bucks. I mean, might not be the greatest thing in the world, but probably work. I'll probably replace this with the, the heavy duty uh, black bands that make the draw weight a little bit more, a little bit more power. But I mean, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty solid right there. Um, you know, plastic handle, but everything else is metal. <laughs> besides the bands and stuff, so, I mean, it's it's pretty solid. Okay, uh, that's just the Micro Infernos. I didn't get these on a thrift store or anything like that. I got them from Dave, Web, uh, Dave Canterbury's website, so uh, that's not really part of it, but that's what they come in, that's what they look like. They're kind of like gel tabs almost, where they, they stay lit even if they, they get wet. <clears throat> uh, I got this, it's just a little whistle can opener, you can't really see this but it's got uh, markings on it for measurements but you know uh, you suck out there in the woods uh, you break your ankle can't walk out you got that uh, you got that whistle right there and it's pretty loud somebody if somebody's nearby they're gonna hear you if you start blowing on that thing pretty good <clears throat> so that's just a good little addition uh, I really don't carry it with me um, right now because the places I'm going to right now to trek around in civil, uh, civilization is not that far away um, you know you, you can pretty much see houses and stuff from from where you're at so for me right now I'm not carrying it right now but you know once I start venturing into places where there's not um, you know a lot of homes or uh, uh, a lot of humans around you know uh, then probably start carrying that a little bit more so there's that. That actually came with the fire steel that I bought. Uh, just, like I said, just haven't used it, but something good to have. It's good for signaling, you know. It's just a bonus with the can opener or bottle opener or whatever and measuring stick right there. <clears throat> All right, next I want to show you guys. I I found this. Uh, I found this enamel. I think it's called enamelware uh, water wash basin, something like that. But this thing was three dollars. I mean, you know, it's metal. You know, it's got little dings and chips in it. You know, but you know, if you're setting up a, a base camp somewhere, you're gonna go camping out for four, five, six, seven days a week, whatever. You know, if you can't find a use for a container, something's wrong with you. Um, I mean, I used to, I used to not really care so much about containers, but more and more, I'm starting to learn more and more that. 
containers are, are, are pretty high up on the list of priorities. I mean, it can, this thing can carry water, hold water, wash your dishes, boil water, cook food. I mean, there's just so many uses for this thing. And uh, like I said, you know, it's it's uh, it, you know, it's got some chips and cracks in it, or not cracks really, but chips, in, you know, from the enamel, some scratches. But for three dollars for that big metal, you know, wash bin right there. I mean, you know, hygiene. You can you could take a little bird's bath with it. You know, anything like that. That thing right there is uh, that thing's bulletproof, man. That, that thing that's that's a heck of a deal, man. Three bucks. Just wanted to show you guys that, you know, like I said, so right there to, all together, that's, you know, nine, eight, seven, eight, nine dollars, something like that. Um, got a couple other things that, see if I can dig it out here. <clears throat> I just made this little pouch. Uh, me and my wife went to the fabric store, just bought some, some canvas type fabric. Uh, and these little... Not sure what you call them, little drawstring type things here to, to close your stuff with. So I made that little pouch. I just wanted to put my fire kits in one pouch instead of having like three or four separate little tins. It gets kind of annoying trying to dig through them and stuff like that. So what I did is I just cut it out, I folded it over, and I hand sewed it or sewn. Uh, you know, up the, along the bottom, up the side, and then I folded this side over and stuck a piece of um, tar nylon twine bank line in there to make the drawstring and then uh, like I said I put the little drawstring uh, plastic piece on there and you know it just closes up uh, pretty good so and it fits my little two little I mean I got pine pits in this one I'm sorry pine resin and uh, you know magnifying glass and tender fungus in that pouch right there so you know I probably made that, it probably took me 30 minutes, um, and it probably cost me like 50 cents to make, you know, I don't know, it's better than, you know, buying, going out and buying one that costs you five, six bucks, and, you know, as much as you don't want to think so, sewing, learning how to fix things, maybe fix your gear, fix your clothing. It's a pretty important uh, uh, thing to, to, to try and learn. So I'm trying to learn that. It's it's very crude. It's not sewn very nicely by any means, but uh, something that you know I'm trying to work on. Um, so I mean, there's that. It's a nice little thing. I, I think I made. I like it. Um, the next thing I picked up was uh, we went on vacation to Mexico, and uh, before we got back on our cruise ship. We, uh, you know, I was like, hey, you know what, I want to find a pouch for my compass. I couldn't really find anything, and this is before I made this. I really hadn't had this idea yet. So I was like, well, you know, I want to find something that's, you know, kind of, kind of durable enough to, to put my compass in. Uh, you know, find something that fits. So, anyways, before we got back on the cruise ship, we found this. Uh, pretty much all it is is um, a cigarette. Um, you know, not carton, uh, cigarette pack holder. So, but my compass fits perfectly right down in there. I can just tuck the lanyard down in there. But it also has this little side pouch over here for a lighter. So, not only does it hold my compass, but it also holds another way for me to get a, sh a sure fire. Well, I wouldn't say sure fire, sure flame, unless this thing gets wet. But even then, I can dry that out. Um, I don't rely on lighters. I don't rely on matches. Uh, I just don't think that they're something to rely on. Um, that's why in prior videos, I've done fires with flint and steel and a ferro rod. Um, and I'm going to try and do another one on solar, uh, you know, using the sun's rays with the magnifying glass to make a fire. Um, so I don't, I don't, I don't, um... You know, I don't trust lighters all the time because you know it could get wet, and then you're, and then what if you're freezing? Then you got no way to start fire because you're. That's the only thing you counted on. So I like to start fires other ways. I have lots of redund redundancies on how to start fires. I just believe it's one of the most important things, along with uh, along with cutting tools. So I have you know I have a knife. Actually, I have two knives that I carry with me all the time. 
got a, a, a folding saw, and I got um, either a machete or um, the camp axe, depending on what I'm doing uh, or where I'm at. Um, if I'm down by the water, I'll use the machete because it cuts the bamboo and river cane pretty easily. More wooded areas, I'll go with uh, you know the camp axe. So, but I mean that was like three or four bucks, and it's it's leather, you know. I don't know if it smells like real leather. I'm not sure, um, but I mean it's sturdy and it's and it's it's hard. It's it's not like flimsy piece of junk, and that's the reason I picked that up. So I got that, and then one last thing that I kind of came up with. This isn't really anything I bought. Let's see if I can get it out here. <clears throat> Um, I showed you guys the the orange survival steel uh, ferro rod that I've been using. So I just took my back up here and I put it on the I put it on the uh, sheath of my knife here. And this is just a handmade sheath that's pretty much a piece of crap, um, but I made it and I like it better than the Kydex. Not a big Kydex fan right now. I mean, maybe I'll change my mind on that, but I like leather right now. Um, so, and, and I said, you know, I just thought to myself, hey, you know, you made that sheath, you know, even if it's ugly and isn't the greatest, hey, you made it, so you put the time and effort into it, so, and I like the color of it, but anyways, so, um, but it doesn't have a fire steel holder on it, so what all I did was I cut some little inner tube uh, pieces from a tire, uh, made ranger bands, and then I just attached it right there to my, to my knife, so, if I... Something happens, I lose my pack, I lose my fire steel, then I got it back up and it's right there on my knife. So I just pull my knife out, pull that fire steel out, you know, go to town trying to get sparks off my fire steel with my knife. So, I mean, uh, that's a couple things I wanted to show you guys today. Um, I'm going to try to come back with some more videos, some different type things, maybe not the same stuff you see all the time on a lot of other people's channels. Um, things that I think are self-reliant things that I think are common man, you know. Um, I mean, everybody can show you 50 different ways to start a fire, you know. I mean, it's cool. I like starting, you know, trying different ways to improve my skills to start fires, but, you know, I think there's other ways to be self-reliant also. Uh, it doesn't always have to be um, in the woods. Uh, you, you can be self-reliant at home, too. So I'm going to try and come up with some different ideas and make some, uh, make some videos for you guys. So, uh... Thanks for joining me. Appreciate uh, you watching. Any comments are welcome. Thank you.